Hangzhou, China. July 7, 2010. Air traffic at Jiangshan International Airport, one of the busiest in the entire nation, grinds to a halt when pilots spot a UFO hovering over the runway. You have Chinese pilots coming into the airport there, and they actually are reporting unusual shaped object, unusual object maneuvering, uh, to the extent that it, it prompted the airport to essentially shut down for an hour. I think there were 18 flights that were diverted away from the airport during that hour. There was a lot of speculation as to what this thing was, and we don't really have an answer to this day. Neither civilian nor military authorities were able to identify the object and the Chinese government made no official comment on the situation. But behind the scenes, the incident and its implications worried Chinese officials, and an investigation was launched. That incident really shocked the Chinese. And at that point, they thought, okay, we've got to see what's going on here. For decades, investigators around the world suspected China had a deep interest in unidentified aerial phenomena. But the Chinese government is historically secretive, and members of the UFO community have had difficulty obtaining information on their methods of UAP research. It's very difficult to extract reliable information about what countries like China are doing in relation to UFOs. About the only thing we know for sure is that there are government programs looking at this. The Chinese government is notoriously closed and secretive on a range of issues, so it doesn't surprise me that it's the case on UFOs as well. But in the 21st century, secrets have become harder and harder to keep. The UFO sighting at Jiangshan Airport was only one of over 3,000 reported in China over the past two decades. And in the years that followed the sightings at Hangzhou, China has undergone a significant change in its approach to UAPs. June 2019, China's Early Warning Academy, a division of the People's Liberation Army Air Force, issues a government report acknowledging an increase in what they refer to as unidentified air conditions. So in China, what we call unidentified aerial phenomena, they call unidentified air conditions, and they've set up new task force to look at this. <laughs> China's getting a lot of UFO reports. And one interesting thing about what China does to collect UFO reports is that they work very closely with all of these independent Chinese UFO groups that are around the country. Their public has UFO clubs that have a million or more members. They have multiple clubs that are so much bigger than our little tiny UFO groups, MUFON and things like that, which are very valuable. But compared to these Chinese groups, oh my gosh, it's, it's gigantic. There's no problem in China for you to start up your own UFO group, but you are absolutely going to be in communication with Chinese authorities, and they actively monitor every one of those groups. In 2019, in the same report that revealed China's UAP program, Air Force Early Warning Academy researcher Chen Li also stated that the country would become the first in the world to use AI, or artificial intelligence, to analyze all information related to UAPs. It seems that they are looking for patterns in the data to see historically whether examination of past reports can throw up any patterns that human analysts might have missed. And this is a very important aspect for the future as the technology improves. One of the things in the recent report to the US Congress was that the United States needs to start doing this. We don't want a situation where the Chinese government gets ahead of the game, so there's a gap to be closed there. 
I can easily see the benefit from having a very, very excellent program to analyze these patterns. Because that's what you're looking for, is you're looking for anomalous patterns. And so the fact that China is announcing that they're doing it, it was quite significant. The Chinese have really stepped up their own official UFO investigations, and it's the People's Liberation Army itself that's spearheading this.